Are you lacking in taking action towards something that you're trying to reinvent yourself on? Well, today's episode, we are going to dive into the piece of inspired energy that actually paves the way to inspired action. Stay tuned for episode 21 have situations, experiences, and moments in our life when we know deep at our core we have to do something different. We have to pivot. And regardless of how big or small that pivot is, it requires us to change something in our life. And that change can feel really uncomfortable. However, it is that change that is creating something entirely new. And it is that newness that creates a very different way of life in one area or multiple areas of our life. What's this all about? It is all about reinventing, reinventing thyself. My name is Michelle Shutter, and I'd like to welcome you to Reinventing Thyself. I am so glad that you joined me today because it is here that we'll move beyond our old self, our old identity, and that trailer of garbage from the past that we like to pull into the future, but really need to ditch that hitch. It is here that we'll move into that place of reinvention and embracing the newness of it all. Are you ready to step into reinventing thyself? Because guess what? It is never too late and your time is now. Let's get started. Hey, welcome back to the podcast. This is Michelle Shutter. I am a certified life coach. And one of the things that I love to do is to really inspire you to reinvent yourself in some way and really stay true to that process because really in reinventing thyself is all about embracing the newness of creating something new in your life that is aligned with your heart and soul. Because when you can do that, Things are so much easier. And so today I thought, you know, perhaps we need to dive into inspired energy because that is the prerequisite for inspired action. Now, the day I'm recording this episode, it is pretty chilly here. So if you are listening on podcasts, you're gonna you're not gonna see that I have a hat on because my gosh, it is like a single digit here in Wisconsin. And the sun is shining, which makes it just a beautiful day by looking outdoors, but it is bitterly cold. So we are staying nice and cozy today here in Wisconsin. Depends if you're inside or outside. So what better way and what better day to talk about inspired energy than today? Because as I mentioned, inspired energy paves the path for inspired action makes sense, right? So, you know, when we're talking about inspired energy, and and let's back up and just talk about energy for a second. Everything is energy. Everything physical, everything non-physical, everything is energy. So when we think of our thoughts, when we think of our emotions, when we think of our actions, all of that is energy too. So When I think of energy and and the way I help people think about energy is really like, how do you want to show up in the world? Now, I want to put a little disclaimer on that because there is, all energy serves a purpose. Some energy is sustainable that serves us long term. Some energy is short term. And generally, some of the short term energy serves a brief purpose But unfortunately, many people get caught up in the short-term energy that actually is more destructive than it is constructive or empowering for them. And I'm not, when I'm asking you, like, how do you show up? I'm not talking about being a positive poly all the time, right? It really is this conscious awareness around our energies and harmonizing those energies so that they serve our higher self and they serve our greater good. Now, I want you to to remember that there's neither good nor bad. Like, don't judge the energy. No matter where you are, don't judge the energy. Just create an awareness around it. 
Inspired energy should feel light. It should feel flowing. It should feel peaceful. It should feel grounded. It should bring a calm to you. Yes, there may be some excitement that taps into that, that may elevate that in a way, but inspired energy is not like this frantic energy, okay? Inspired energy is not in this place where you feel like you're jack sideways, okay? So think of inspired energy is that that calming, that flowing, that um, just that peaceful, light feeling that you can experience. Now, in order for us to take inspired action on what we are looking to reinvent, we really want to have this inspired energy piece in place because when we have the inspired energy in place, the inspired action just comes naturally. Yes, there may be a little bit of fear that creeps in. Yes, you know, we begin to question our courage, all of that. But again, when we are in the right place energetically and coming from that inspired energy, the actions almost take care of themselves. So today I want to share with you just five different ways to really up level your inspired energy so that you can pave the path to inspired action. How about that, right? So the first one is honest self-care. And when I'm talking about honest self-care, I'm not talking about you know, the massages and the the day days away and the pedicures and manicures and all of that, right? Like all of that is great and all of that serves a purpose, but I'm really breaking this down into just three main areas. And when I'm talking about honest self-care, I'm talking about health, physical, emotional health. I'm talking about happiness and I'm talking about healing. So health, I'm not going to dive too deep into that, but you really have to get honest with yourself when it comes to your health. What, how are you fueling your body? What are you doing to your body? Good things in, good things out. Crappy things in, crappy things out, right? Like it, it's um, it, it's not rocket science, science by any means. However, when it comes to our health, it may be common knowledge, but it's not common practice. So when I'm talking about honest self-care, like why not? What What is holding you back from really diving into the healthiest version of yourself? Because if, if your, body, your body is toxic and you have all this extra stuff, like how do you move through the, the mind in a positive way? Toxic body, toxic mind, okay? Um, looking at sleep, looking at hydration, looking at fitness, like all of those um, exercise, moving, just moving the body in general, all of that contributes to health. And so you have to obviously get really honest on your self-care. The second thing around the honesty of self-care is happiness. So we're going to tap into that emotional component of, you know, what truly brings you happiness? What truly brings you that, that upper level of fulfillment in, in the sense of happiness. And I don't want you to look at outside external things to bring you happiness. Happiness is an inside job. And perhaps I need to do an episode on that. So when you, when I say the word happiness, like what brings you happiness? Hmm. You have to look. Are you relying on outside external situations, circumstances, events to bring you that happiness? And if so, why? Right. So pause and think about that for, for a minute or two. And then the last thing, and there are other things that come also into this honest self-care, but I'm just going through these three things is, is healing. So when we're looking at, you know, that whole piece of inspired energy, a lot of times we have judgments, we have um, resentments, we have past hurts, uh, limiting beliefs, doubts, worry, all of that creeps in. And if we are not moving that through our body, those energies of resentment, judgment, guilt, shame, fear, um, lack, worry, um, disbelief, like all of that can get stuck in our body. That energy can 
like get stuck. So we wonder sometimes why physically we're also unhealthy. Well, there, there's a high potential to that we haven't moved this energy through our body and that holds us back as well. So we have to look at like healing that and, and moving, processing that and moving that through so that we can clear space and bring in more of what serves our higher level. So the first one is honest self-care. So take a minute, maybe even pause this episode and think about, you know, where am I not being honest? Where am I not being true to myself when it comes to my self-care? The second thing that I want to um, share with you in terms of, you know, creating and really tapping into inspired energy is making sure that we have a vision, first of all, and that vision is value-based, which I referred to a couple episodes ago, but then making sure we're truly aligning with that vision. And as I just mentioned, you know, episode 19, I talked about creating reinventing goals. And that is um, not the whole masculine energy way of creating goals where, you know, we're just going to list them out, we're going to check them off, and we're going to move through this. And, you know, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to reach my goal. And whoever stands in the way, look out, you know, right? Like, for women, like, generally, the majority of us, it doesn't serve us to tap into that masculine energy when it comes to aligning ourselves with our vision. We really, like, ma- masculine energy is really important, and we all have masculine energy, Well, whether you are gender male or gender female, energy is not gender specific. However, we have to harmonize those two energies and bring it um bring that connectedness together. One of them cannot dominate the other. We have to harmonize those. And in addition, um, when we don't create with our feminine energy, it really causes us to disconnect. So for many women, and, and if you're a mom, this is really easy to do. It's really easy to disconnect from your feminine energy because you are so giving and, and you are putting everybody else first and you're, you, um, you're figuring out the schedule, you're figuring out the menu, you're do, you know, you've got things on household chores that you're trying to do. Maybe you're paying bills. Um, Maybe the kids need to go someplace and and your spouse isn't available or you're a single mom and you're having to do it all, right? Like all of that gets to be really heavy masculine. And it's when we're heavy in that masculine, it's easy to shift away from our vision and actually lose sight of our vision, which actually that was an episode I just did, um, episode 20. If you want to go back and check that out, that was all about losing sight of your vision. So making sure that you are aligned with your vision because when that vision sits at the forefront and it really radiates deeply with you and it resonates at a new level like for you and with you, you are going to step into a new place and that inspired energy is just going to free flow through you and to you and to other people that are around you. The third thing... I want you to think about is poo-pooing perfection. So when we are looking at inspired energy, we can't get hung up on perfection. Perfection will certainly kick us out of the game. Now, if you have listened to episode 19, or perhaps you're in the process, or you're going to go back, like I made a couple big errors there. I said the year 2020. Okay, first of all, why would I ever want to go back to the year 2020? Uh Uh-uh, no way, not going to happen. Don't want to do it. And so when I went back and I was editing that video, I did not even catch that I said 2020. Like I was totally zoned out and just not completely present when I was editing. And so when I looked at the final product, I'm like, oh, shoot, like, I don't want to go back and re-edit it. And so it's just going to stay. It's just going to stay the way it is. And episode 20 then, 
um, when I did. I generally like to record any videos or podcasts in the morning just because my energy level is different in the morning. I just, I feel really grounded, really connected. I've gone through my morning routine. So I just like, I love being able to do these in the morning. But for whatever reason, I recorded episode 20 late in the afternoon, like early evening. And I looked at that video and I was like, ugh, like it, it just wasn't exactly what I wanted. However, again, I had to step back and think about, okay, when I created that um, list or a little agenda of what I wanted to share in that video, that came from Inspired Energy. And if I'm going to look at this video now and critique it because I don't like the way I look, well, then I'm negating my Inspired Energy and I'm moving into perfection. And that perfection will not serve me and it will just hold me back. So again, it was like, you know what? I showed up. It came from a place that was fueled with energy and it's going to get published. And that's what I did. Now, if you haven't read this book yet, The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown, I highly recommend it because three things that, that come out of um, imperfection are courage, compassion, and connection. And that is so beautiful when you look at the whole realm of inspired energy in that, you know, when I use my examples here of the videos and the recordings I, I just did, like, dang, it, it's going to, it takes some courage to post something that what I consider in my ego mind, not exactly perfect, right? So it takes courage. It takes courage to get in front of a camera. It takes courage to really um, think deeply and really tap into that, that message almost that wants to come through you. And then when I think you look at um, compassion, it's that whole place of, okay, how can I give myself some grace in this and just continue to publish it, even though, again, it's not perfect. And then that whole piece of connection, um, I believe she goes maybe into relationships in this book. It's been a while since I've read it. I probably should put it on my reread list for 2022. However, um, when I think of connection, I really think of that connection with yourself and and connecting back into that heart space because when you're in that heart space, like that's your your inspired energy, right? And and that is what radiates to people. It isn't all the the garbage that is in your head that likes to take you out of the game. It's really all the the beauty and the radiance and the vibrancy that comes from the heart space. So um, we've gone through three so far. Number one was honest self-care. Number two was making sure you're aligned with your vision. And number three was poo-poo perfection. Now, the fourth thing that um, you want to look at in and I kind of alluded it to um, to it in this last one in Poo Poo Perfection is really that deep connection with yourself. And again, that comes from the heart space and knowing that when you can let the ego go and, and knowing that that deep inner knowing, like you know, like you know, like you know, that will serve you and really create almost a new level of inspired energy. And not only does it pour into you, but it also pours into other people that you have direct contact to. And it pours into just to other areas of your life as well. And that's the beauty of, of this and like reinventing yourself in that you know you're you're pulling off layers you're you're shedding the skin like a snake right and and getting rid of the baggage and the garbage that like just doesn't serve you anymore so when you again can tap into that heart space and really develop that deep connection with self and for many women like we have to bring that back. Like that's a work in progress. Like we have to reconnect with our highest self, our truest self and really um, 
at a, at a deep level. It isn't a, a surface thing by any means. And then the fifth thing in terms of increasing your um, or developing your inspired energy is really about investing in yourself. And for many people, um, you know, I don't have the time to do that. Or um, there, there's an excuse, right, that comes up over and over again. And if that is you, like, I would put the brakes on that and I would, like, pull back the layers of that and look at, like, why? What, what holds you back from investing in yourself? You know, that can be um, anything from books to videos to podcasts to courses to um, a new health program, a new exercise program, to coaching, to mentors, to, you know, hiring people that can really support you in some way. Um, the thing is, when you invest in yourself, you can never lose that. Like once something is exposed to you, you can't ever go back and with, because you have this awareness. And but yet it's up to you to take that awareness, to take that knowledge and apply it to where you are and where you want to go. And that is, um, again, something that you can't take away from from people and really raising that consciousness, raising that awareness is so, so powerful. So recapping here real quick, the five ways that you can really increase your inspired energy is one, the honest self-care, two, aligned with aligned with your vision, making sure that alignment is there, three, is poo-pooing perfection, four, is um, developing that deep connection with yourself, and five is investing in yourself. And when you get these five things, and it doesn't even have to be all of them, right? Like when you start applying even little pieces of each and every one of these, you're going to feel your inspired energy meter rise. And when your inspired energy meter rises, that paves the path for you to take inspired action. So many times, like we write our goals down and, and we have this vision, we know what we want, but yet sometimes we don't take the action. We don't take the action because it doesn't feel inspired. Well, we don't feel inspired because we don't have the inspired energy, right? So we have to work backwards on this and really look at these pieces that I shared with you today. Now, one of the things that you can do to... Also, um, which I alluded to in the investment of yourself, is um, take advantage of the five-step video series or the five-day video series I have on reinventing thyself. Um, five really great videos that are going to just um, in, not encourage, but really perhaps even crack open something in you that needs to be explored, that needs to to have light shed on it so that you can create some awareness around these different pieces and why you do what you do. The five day video series is free and you can get that at reinventingthyself.com. And the other thing is that, you know, I'm just like really excited because this is a year of reinvention and we can continue to reinvent our year throughout the entire year because when we bring something to fruition, like that's the time where then we want to tap into the expansiveness and expand it even more and up level it even more. Like in the growth and the work of it and what we want to accomplish, like it's never done. Yes, at times we slow things down and, and maybe it's not as fast as what we want, However, when we can really have support and really look at investing in ourselves in a way that is going to up level ourselves and really support the people around us, like that is an exciting opportunity. So yes, uh, February 14th, we are starting reinventing your year 
which is going to be a year long coaching um, opportunity for people. It's a group coaching opportunity and it is going to be expansive in so many ways. I can't even begin to tell you. Um, you can actually get more information on that by going through that video series or you can reach out to me and I will put my um, information in the description or with the show notes that go with this podcast or video. Um, but right now, my email, you can reach me at hello at michelleshutter.com. So if you are looking to have some support throughout the entire year, it is going to be an amazing, amazing opportunity. So that is about it. That is it for today. I um, We kind of did the, the deconstruct of inspired action by starting with the inspired energy and these five ways perhaps will support you in developing and up-leveling your inspired energy. So let me know what you're taking away. What resonated with you? Shoot me an email at hello at michelleshutter.com. Leave a comment where you are listening to or watching this video. And just remember to embrace the newness that is happening in your life, the, the opportunity that is here for change, for you to pivot, because when you can create something that in your life that is aligned with your heart and soul, that's the beauty of reinventing thyself. Until next time. Well, what are you waiting for? Whether you've pivoted and are unsure or you're on the verge of pivoting, there is no better time than now for you to begin. Want to know why? Because if it wasn't the right time, the pivot wouldn't have shown up. And to get you started, I've got three shortcuts to reinventing thyself. Just head on over to www.reinventingthyself.com and you can download it there. And don't forget to message me with the shortcut that resonates with you the most. One last thing, I know you and I are not the only ones that have leaned into the pivot. Be sure to share this with others so they can be supported too. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you for supporting me and sharing this message. Until next time.